If you'd seen my last video, you'll know that I added Bluetooth to an iPod Classic 5th Gen. And because I'd wired up the Bluetooth board to the battery and the headphone jack, this mod's all just contained within the rear housing. So as I'd said in that video, I decided to sell these rear housing assemblies as their own separate kit, because I know a lot of people want to add Bluetooth to their iPods and are comfortable opening them up, but aren't too keen on soldering. So what this kit contains is a rear housing with a Bluetooth board on the inside, which is why it's at the bottom of the headphone jack. The headphone jack will still work as normal too, by the way. It's powered by a 3000 mAh battery, which also doubles as the battery for the iPod. The battery that comes with the iPod was a 650 mAh one, so this one's over 4 times bigger, which I think's necessary as the Bluetooth will drain a bit of extra power when it's being used. To install it, you're obviously going to have to remove the rear housing from your iPod. I won't go into too much detail about how to do that here, but if you want a more in-depth description, you can watch my iPod Classic 5th Gen guide. Although luckily, it's a very simple process. All you have to do is pry off the back, carefully unclip the battery, remove the hard drive so you have more space to work with, and then remove the headphone jack flex. Now if you aren't aware, these iPods came in two different sizes, the slim and the thick version. The slim version came on the 30GB iPods, and the thick came on the 60 and 80GB. I'm selling this kit in both sizes, however, since it comes with an upgraded 3000 mAh battery, you'll only be able to install the slim version if you use an iFlash quad. All the other hard drive adapters are too thick to fit with a 3000 mAh battery, unfortunately. I've tried it with an iFlash solo, and it was just ever so slightly too thick to get it closed. If you go with the thick version, you'll be able to use an iFlash solo, duo, or quad. I haven't tested the iFlash M siders as of yet, so I'm not sure about those ones, but it will just fit with one of those green M sider adapters, as well as the green CF to SD card adapters. Also, if you have an original slim hard drive, it'll fit. Again, not the thick one that came on the 60 and 80 gigabyte versions, but the slim 30 gigabyte version is confirmed working. You just may have to take off the foam and rubber mounts and find another way to secure it. Although if you're going this far to upgrade it, I'd recommend upgrading the storage as well. So to seal this thing back up, first connect the headphone jack flex, then get all the excess wires and tuck them up in the top like this. Now to install your hard drive or whatever storage you've decided to go with. Make sure your battery is facing the right direction like this, then you can plug in the flex cable to the motherboard. Now to seal the thing back up, you'll need to take a bit more care here than usual as there's a bit more going on. Make sure none of the wires will be sandwiched in between your battery and the adapter as that could cause clearance issues or even push against the back of the screen. And make sure your battery and adapter stay in the correct positions and then you can just snap it shut and all should be good. It's also worth mentioning if you're installing the slim version with an iFlash quad, you'll also have to bend over the hard drive flex cable like this. And there we have it, our Bluetooth upgraded iPod with massive storage and upgraded battery, ready for 2023. Another thing to note about this mod is that the lock switch has been converted to a power switch for the Bluetooth board. So unfortunately, you will lose lock switch functionality. This is necessary though, otherwise the Bluetooth board will stay powered on at all times, draining the battery unnecessarily. To pair your Bluetooth earphones, first click on the power switch to turn on the Bluetooth. Next, put your earphones or speaker in pair mode, then click the power switch in like this. It should connect after a couple seconds and now you're ready to go. If you're having issues pairing, make sure the iPod and earphones aren't paired to a previous device. You can unpair by clicking the button again. So if you're interested in getting one of these, I'll have a link on the screen and in the description. If you don't feel comfortable installing it yourself, alternatively you can send your iPod into me and I can do the mod for you. If you're interested, you can book that also on my website. Alternatively, if you want to give the mod a go yourself, I have a link to the Bluetooth board I used in the description. You can get it for only $3 off of AliExpress and I also made an in-depth tutorial for how to install it in my last video. You can also technically install this into an iPod Classic 6th or 7th gen, since they use the same rear housings, headphone jacks and batteries. So I did try that as well, although there's one issue, the Bluetooth can't easily pass through aluminium which the 6th and 7th gens are made from. I removed the small reinforcement shield from behind the LCD in hopes that the signal could pass through the screen. The Bluetooth board has a connection point for an extra antenna, which happens to be the right size for this one I pulled from a broken Nintendo DS, so I plug that in as well. It does work, kinda, but the range is pretty limited and the audio cuts out only after a meter or two, so I guess it'll work if you're just using earphones in your pocket, but I still wouldn't really recommend it. It works much better with the 5th gen. 